afternoon, everyone, and welcome here in Sports on Air. We have a very, very special episode for you guys, and this is going to be a very, very interesting discussion. By the way, this is uh, organized by Coach Elgon's Corner in partnership with Samang Basketballista ng Pilipinas Coaches Academy, SBP, NCR North, and Basketball Coaches Association of the Philippines, or BCAP. And this is in cooperation with International Basketball University Philippines and Jose Rizal University Athletics Office. This is the introduction to the Lithuanian basketball system. And we have to thank our sponsors, Gatorade, our media partner, Tops Usapang Sports. And for those who are in our live stream, this is um, also streaming in 3B Hoops Facebook pages. And again, for... For us to introduce who is the man behind this uh, event, online event right now, the, B, the BCAP president, Coach Louis Gonzalez. Coach Louis. Okay, good afternoon, Ernest. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, coaches, uh, especially to coach, uh, Dr. Mindaugas Balsunas, okay, for gracing our invitation to share with us the the Twainian style of uh, okay, the basketball development. And uh, also to Coach Jong, uh, Director of uh, the SPP Coaches Academy. Maraming maraming salamat po. And of course, joining us on our uh, panel, uh, we have SBP Coaches Academy uh, Head, uh, Coach Jong Wichigo. Coach John. Good yes, good afternoon, coaches. Thank you, Ernest. And thank you very much, Coach Louis Gonzalez of BCAP, for uh, inviting me uh, to panel in this uh, webinar by Dr. Mindaugas from the International uh, Lithuanian Basketball uh, University. Thank you very much, and I'm hoping to learn a lot from uh, Dr. Mindaugas. Thank you. Thank you, Coach John. But before we introduce our guest, Coach Louis, uh, can you enlighten us uh, why Coach Minda is selected for this uh, special <laughs> talk in our uh, in our afternoon? Oh uh, yeah, uh, uh, Coach Minda was. Uh, okay, I heard so much about him through our the IBU uh, ch Philippine chapter uh, managing director, Coach Raymond, and uh, we've okay, he, uh, we've been. Uh, I've had had a chance to talk to him personally last week but we've been in contact for the for a year already and uh again taking time out can uh to to educate the coaches and uh to at least increase pa natin yung mga knowledge ng coaches by yung ito yung mga exposures ng mga ganitong activities and uh with Dr. Mindaugas from Lithuania which we know uh lagi nasa Olympics napakalaking bagay na malaman din natin ma-share niya sa atin kung Ano ba yung, ano yung ginagawa nilang maganda na pwede nating mag, madagdag sa magandang ginagawa na natin dito sa Philippines? Okay, thank you, Coach Louie. Uh, Coach Jong, you have any words that you can describe our guest for this day? I am I'm really very overwhelmed because this will, honestly, this will be uh, one of my few times that I will be exposed to uh, Lithuanian basketball. Yes, the Gilas has been... <clears throat> Uh, trained in Lithuania in our training camp before uh, with uh, Coach uh, uh, Kistutis. He was our guest coach, uh, Mr. Uh, coach Kistutis at that time. But I'm again looking forward and I'm very sure that I will learn with uh, the presentation of Dr. Mindaugas. And without further ado, okay, everyone, let us give a round of applause to our very our speaker for today, Dr. Mindaugas Balsunas. Dr. Hello, sir. Yes, yes. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, my friends in Philippines. Uh, I, I feel, you know, a bit strange after so nice words, <laughs> so many <laughs> introductions and so on. But in general, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud and honored uh, to be today with you. You see, the world is very small. We can just uh, be in the different uh, sides of, of, of our you know, world and we can speak about basketball. This is the best, I think opportunity and uh, thank you for for arranging this uh, today i want to share i want to share the and basketball system let's say description and, and knowledge and everything and i'm, I'm sure we can learn 
and we are learning from each other as a countries, as a basketball nation and so on. And uh, our uh, very close contact uh, uh, started maybe one year and a half ago uh, when uh, my dear friend, uh, Raymond Mercader, well, coach, uh, came to Lithuania for IBU course. And yeah. from this uh, time, I, I, I really uh, very eager to, to make a cooperation and uh, make a very close relationship of our basketball uh, organizations and this is why IBU basically is established uh, because uh, just to give uh, Lithuanian knowledge just to share what we have the best for everybody in the world who wish. So I want to start maybe if you allow uh, from my presentation uh, I just want to ask the voice is okay the, the sound is good very much very much okay. coach very much Okay, so so um, I'll start from my presentation. Okay, okay. everybody, see. Uh, I I will show here. If, if if anybody need to ask someone so, so something just just you can ask immediately i mean you are hosting this meeting so you are uh, setting the rules so I, I will i will talk today about lithuanian basketball uh, management uh, organization uh, structure uh and uh, basketball in Tuania, uh managed by basically four organizations of course lithuanian basketball federation uh lithuanian sports university Lithuanian Basketball Coaches Association and International Basketball University, because all these four um, organizations, uh, they are contributing uh, basketball development uh, in, in different ways a little bit, but contributing a lot. Of course, the main organization is Lithuanian Basketball Coaches Association and Lithuanian Basketball Federation. So two, let's say, official uh, institutions. That. So a bit about myself. I was uh, really lucky to go uh, basically through all main organizations of in basketball and in sports in Lithuania and in, in Europe. So starting from coaching uh, youth uh, and students, uh, I, I, I've been also uh, managing the Lithuanian Basketball uh, Federation for eight years and also been in Olympic Committee in FIBA Europe. Then I, I turned more for education because uh, I clearly uh, see that uh, education is a crucial uh, point in, in, in basketball development because uh, coaches, uh, when they have um, very strong knowledge, so the results, of course, uh, getting high and high. So we, we, we have this uh, very clear understanding in, in, in Lithuania. Okay, so yeah, usually we are in, in leaders, uh, leading positions generally in, in, in the world. So uh, in youth and, and, and in men's, especially in men's, we have problem, of course, and I will talk. Uh, we are not hiding, we, we have something to solve. But uh, the question is, and I'll try to answer how less than 3 million population uh, country can be one of the world uh, leaders. So uh, I'll start from uh, main reasons of basketball success in Lithuania. And uh, the, first is, um, the first is general popularity of the sport. Uh, historical victories, uh, you know, uh, basketball in Lithuania started uh, around 75, 80 years ago when we won uh, two first of three uh, European champions, championships. So we became uh, twice in, 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 in the first three uh, European championships and uh, uh, we became a champions. And uh, from that uh, time, uh, very strong, I can say, cultural cultural, uh, you know, fundament uh, was, was built. And, and from that time, basketball, the most popular sport. By the way, I should tell that the first sport, uh, team sport from Lithuania uh, that uh, went to Olympic game was football. So uh, it, it should be interesting. But later on, when basketball started winning, so it, it was no question uh, which, which sport is the first. Of course, exceptional attention of the government. Uh, we have really good finances for this, coming from government, from Olympic Committee, from municipalities uh, to the basketball system. And, and I will explain a little uh, bit later about this. Huge media coverage. It, it, it helps a lot. It helps a lot to keep uh, attention on basketball, popularity, 
and everything here in, in our small country. We are a really small country comparing with all others. And of course, number one kind of sport, this is with, with no question. The second reason is well-organized training process. We have a uh, strong basketball science. We have uh, basically three, four basketball uh, scientific institutions like universities that say that's focusing on basketball research, including Lithuanian Sport University, IBU. We have Klaipeda University and Shirley University. I mean, two other uh, towns in, in Lithuania that uh, they, they have also basketball departments, sport departments. They have basketball scientific uh, people and, and always uh, they do science and so on. Well-educated coaches, I will talk about this. I, be, I think the main reason why Lithuanian basketball is, is strong. And as, as uh, our legendary uh, uh, coach, Vladas Garastas, who, who still is active. He's uh, 89 uh, years old, but uh, he's still an uh, actual uh, honorary president of Basketball Federation and, and uh, in, in, in Coach Association, he's very well active. So he said, uh, always uh, underlines that a coach is an engine of, of entire sport and the same in basketball. Without coach, you cannot do anything. So that's why I'm really pleased uh, to communicate with coaches in the Philippines, because I know you are main, main people in, in basketball uh, in general. Good infrastructure. We have really good infrastructure, especially after uh, 2011, uh, when we hosted the uh, Eurobasket. It is a continental uh, championship for national teams. Uh, so we built, we renewed basically from the uh, scratch uh, our, our infrastructure. We have, I believe, most modern in, in, in the Europe, most probably. Uh, gyms, arenas, and everything, and we're improving. Uh, good uh, local uh, competition system. Since we are a very small uh, country, we can find a lot of opponents to play uh, here. In, in, in 100, 200 kilometers uh, around, you can find uh, 10 or 100 teams to play different opponents. It's, it's really helping a lot uh, uh, for improvement and uh, especially for multi-year development of basketball, of basketball players, youth basketball players. So this is this is big advantage. We have very concentrated local uh, youth uh, competition. So uh, okay, we have productive management system. I believe it's it's a bit unique. It's a bit uh, different that uh, other uh, federation uh, have in the world, and I will explain why. So all segments are involved in basketball management directly. Because we are, uh, in Lithuania, we have 132 members of basketball federation. So it's, it's, it's small. Comparatively, it's really small. We don't need regional federation. We can get uh, together very easy to discuss something and so on. So small countries advantage, as I uh, mentioned before, because, uh, yeah, you can, you can find opponents to play. You can, you can get in contact with anyone. You know everybody by face. So, so it's really easy. And system based on, system based on autonomical associations. This is uh, the unique uh, structure. And I have been analyzing uh, other federation, I mean, in the world. So not too many federation decentralizing management of basketball. This is pure decentralizing. Uh, pure de decentralization because uh, we have a totally separate uh, coaches association. We have totally separate referees association. We have uh, leagues as independent bodies. Uh, it's not directly managed from federation. Uh, we have other organization, purely independent bodies, and then federation as an umbrella that covering all of them and, and inviting to talk. But I mean, the management basically comes from, uh, from the periphery. From 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 uh, decentralized system, not 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 from the center. Uh, let's say uh, uh, the the management uh, comes. And uh, selection, selection, it's it's very much important. And uh, this is what we do very successfully. Uh, most talented kids coming to the basketball. This, I mean, selection. We counting that it's at least fifty percent of your success in, in the future as a basketball player, as a basketball coach, and so on. If you make very strong selection, if you take most talented guys and girls uh, come to the basketball, so you already in fifty percent winners uh, against all, all others. So this is uh, very much important uh, in, in, in the twine. Uh, we have. Oh, sorry. We have a wide uh, wide network 
uh, of uh, basketball school. Uh, we have 60 municipalities in Lithuania. So in every single municipality, some municipality, I will tell you, composed of, of, of three or 5,000 people. So it's like a very small town. But still in this small town, we have, uh, we call it like basketball, uh, sorry, sports school with basketball uh, section. We have maybe one or two coaches supported by municipality and they pay uh, salary uh, like state, uh, state supported the organization and then and purely state organization. And uh, this is very much important. And I will tell you why. Because basically Lithuania is a single uh, country in Europe uh, still supporting this um, uh, sports school system. Uh, because uh, all others, they went from a uh, state-supported system to the uh, non-profit and uh, NGO, non-governmental uh, non system. Uh, Latvia still uh, has some, but uh, for instance, Estonia already uh, destroyed the system and they went for the club system. So it's only private club and private club can get state uh, funding. But uh, I will tell you a very clear reason. For instance, in this small town, I'm, I'm from very small town, Birja in the north of Lithuania. We have uh, maybe 6,000 uh, people in this town, but we still have a uh, state or municipality fully supported uh, sports school with basketball section. If you take as a business plan, it's not uh, totally not profitable for any private organization. So they would close it simply. But since it's financed by municipality, they keeping these two or three coaches in, in the small town. And these two or three coaches can find talent, maybe not in one year, but maybe in five years, one talent. And still very good for general system. Because if one talent comes from every single municipality in five years, we, we have very good selection. So, so in that point, I believe it's a it's, it's big advantage for us. This is called as old Soviet Union uh, system, the sports school system. But uh, when I've been as a secretary general, I've always been pointing out we need to keep it. And still, I'm happy that Currency Federation also supporting this idea. Uh, I mean, uh, this is one of the reasons that, and for instance, we're having a really big problem in women's basketball. But this, uh, but, but, uh, I will talk also about this. But if we destroy this basketball school system, uh, then our women basketball just die. Just, just simply again. So in that point, uh, it's very much in it. And, and, and we have many local competitions. For instance, I'm now living in Kaunas. I'm, I'm talking now from Kaunas. Uh, we call Kaunas as uh, basketball capital here in Lithuania. So we have, we have two different leagues. Uh, in these uh, leagues, we have, uh, I don't know, maybe in each we have 25 different uh, categories, like, you know, youth categories, every single every single uh, age uh, under, under 10, under 11, blah, blah. then we have different kind of leagues like business league, like, uh, I know, insurers league, and some, some kind of driver's league, uh, and very different, uh, you know, leagues where you can enter, where, where you can go and, uh, you know, just, just to play and get experience. And this is, this is very much important. We have, and you don't need to spend a lot of money. For instance, if you have a team, for instance, uh, we have a private uh, schools basketball. We have, uh, I'll explain. So they have maybe uh, in in each age uh, two or three teams. So they delegating the first team to the national championship, but uh, the second and the third place in the town league, as I told you, and they can uh, have a lot of different opponents again because without uh, strong opponents, without losing, uh, without winning games, I mean, you will not uh, progress so well. Okay, so this is the main reason of, of basketball success in Lithuania, and I will uh, go now deeper uh, uh, deeper to each of, of this. Uh, so, okay, this is just for you, for you to understand how popular basketball is, and I think in Philippines it's very similar. So, uh, general uh, popularity of sports is uh, for basketball, 53% of total population following basically daily. So more than half of our nation uh, very much involved in, 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 day, in basketball daily, on daily basis. And football is the second, is, is only 8%. So you can compare, uh, you know, what well, football is, is, is almost nothing. Yeah, but of course they have, I will tell you, as a federation, they have three times uh, more money than basketball. Basketball Federation budget uh, is around 3 million euros. 
So football getting from FIFA, we have uh, at least nine and they're getting locally. So you see, money is not the main criteria, not the main factor. Uh, yeah, they have three times more money and you see basketball is much better. And all the TV ratings and everything always the best in Lithuania for, for basketball. Even even comparing with all others like Eurovision song, uh, best TV shows and, and, and so on and so on. Okay. So about uh, about the federation, I will not uh, go deep uh, very much, but this is uh, quite uh, similar and quite uh, classical structure: general conference, executive board, president. Now we have some bonus. Uh, in a one year, we will have new elections, so will be new one. Secretary general and then administration. I, I don't think it's uh, too much different. Uh, we have this administrative uh, structure in, in in the in the federation. Nothing special. In that, in administrational uh, part, uh, management structure, we have programs, men's, women's, youth, coaches, referees, seniors, uh, project development, and so on. But the most important that uh, organizations that are responsible for men's basketball, for instance, first division, totally different organization. They are not uh, anyhow, uh, let's say, connected uh, uh, in, in, in the law uh, meaning or, or in the organizational side with federations. It's separate like, like NBA and, and some other organization in state. So the first division, uh, federation just caring about the national team, about the national youth teams, women's teams, and, and so on. But all the professional clubs, semi-professional, even amateur clubs, they are totally different organization and so on. And then as a members of basketball federation, they are uh, members of general conference, Gen where, where main decisions are, are taken. So, so okay, uh, the, the, the first league, the first league, men's league, structure of the national basketball leagues, men's league. We have Lithuania Basketball League, purely professional, Jalgeris, Ritas playing here, and, and so on, pure, that's fully professional. Then the second division, semi professional. Uh, the third is, is amateur, uh, regional, we call it regional league. And we have youth league here. So uh, you see, it's it's all these organizations are totally separate. They have own presidents, own directors, own sponsors. Everything is is, is separate. And this is good. For instance, I will tell you what why is good. For instance, when you are attracting sponsors, so uh, you have a lot of kind of beer. So one beer can sponsor Lithuanian basketball league, another national basketball league. Another uh, regional, and we have all beers coming to, to basketball. We have one organization like Federation, um, uh, which uh, let's say just managing everything. So you cannot take competitors uh, as a sponsor. So simply they say, okay, I, I will not go to the same organization with two, two you know, competitors like, like beers or, or, or anything else. So this is very good, and we are attracting many sponsors to, to, to basketball. And here in the first, we have 10 teams. 16 in the second, in the third, around 28. And this is our treasure, is, is a youth league, uh, around 150, or 1,500 teams. 1,500 teams in the youth league. In the small country, uh, less now, we have 2,700,000 uh, 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 people in, in the tournament. So you see, this is, all talents comes from here, from youth league. And this is in small country, they, every, even today, even during the pandemic situation, uh, okay, it's not an example, but uh, they are not, uh, they are not uh, quitting now. Uh, governmental, government yesterday said that, okay, the so massive events should be limited, but, but today everybody playing. Um, okay, structure of men's league, I, I will tell you just like, the first league, of course, for professional, the, the second is semi-professional, this amateur league, and this is, uh, we have students league, by, by the way, uh, beside, and all players uh, who are studying from all the leagues can come to, to, to play for the national student league, yeah, uh, to get a degree, and, and, and so, women's, women's, we, with women's, we really have problems, uh, but, Okay, I don't want to, to say that it's only management problems of, of, of the program because I don't know why, but Federation uh, still keeping the same coach who already not qualified in two, two last, uh, two last uh, European Championships. And they are keeping for the third. So this is, this is something 
that we will change in the next election and it will be different. But uh, usually, uh, I mean, we have a team, if we, if we evaluate it, it objectively, we have a team which can play in, which can get in best eight of, 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 of European team, at least, at least. And maybe can, can play for uh, quarterfinal uh, games and so on. So, uh, so this is not, uh, let's say, current uh, position in the FIBA rating is not reflecting real stage. We have, we have good team, uh, good, good clubs in, in, in the first division. Uh, we have, a, all, again, semi, semi-professional league. Uh, and, and we have youth league for, for girls. But you see, if, if for boys we have 1,500, 1, for girls we have 200. So it's, it's, it's different. Uh, the same functions, professional, semi-professional. We have students league for, for, for women's basketball. So. Youth league. This is where talents are uh, coming from. Youth League, uh, we have championships from under 10, under 11, under 12, 13, 14, 15. Every single group we have uh, teams here. Uh, high school, beside, we have high school championships. They are playing in both. We have around 10,000 licensed youth players. Uh, I'll, talk, I'll talk. But you see, this is our treasure. This is our basement, fundamental for basketball uh, future and so on. And so overall, uh, you see, it, with, with, with 370 boys uh, team, uh, basically that, because we have, we have uh, this is national championship. When I showed that we have 100, um, uh, 1,500 1, teams, so they're playing in different championships. They have in town championships, they're playing in high school and so on. But this is where most talented uh, youth players playing is it? The school, um, how called youth league? Okay, you school, school, school boys or uh, kind of the Lithuanian youth basketball league. Okay, we got. so in here we have around three hundred seventy boys and more than uh, ninety girls. So, so with this number of talented uh, players, you can be one of the leading country. So it's not too too many, three hundred seventy. But well trained, uh, you know, in good process and and, and well uh, well uh, monitored and, and so on. Okay, structure of the youth sport. We have, as I mentioned before, state sector and private sector. So uh, in state sector, uh, we have fully financed uh, by municipalities. Uh, schools and in private sector, we have also the basketball in the bigger because it's it's. Uh, now uh, the municipalities of the main municipalities uh, they made uh, already some uh, support financial support for private schools. They, 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 if, for instance, if kids coming to your uh, private club, you get fifteen euros, fifteen euros from municipality. So it's already a good uh, good support for private sector. So uh, state sector uh, sports school, what I've been talking. About. So in more than 50 cities, uh, and uh, here we have around uh, five cities. Big in the biggest cities, we have private school. So uh, you see uh, around 57 in, in, in total, and here around 10 uh, state uh, school, fully financed by, by state and municipalities, and, and mainly mainly financed by private sector and uh, parents, parents, because. Here, uh, parents pay, but very small money, like five euros, like six euros per month. Here, parents pay like 30 euros, uh, but uh, additionally, 15 euros comes from municipality as non-formal education. So, so I think uh, currently the situation of private school much better uh, because they, are, they can sus be sustainable, financially sustainable and so on. Okay, player transfers. We're always monitoring uh, how, how, let's say, we have circulation of, of, of the players coming from the youth to the third, because this is youth under, under 18, the, 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 the oldest, and then uh, regional league. You can play be, be, being even uh, 14 or, or 15 years old, but, but usually you are coming here because this is men's basketball. 
incorporated. It doesn't matter, it's amateur, but it's men. But sometimes, you know, uh, professional players get retired, they're going to second division, and then to third division, and young guys coming to the third division, they're getting experience from them and so on. So the, basically, uh, in, in this uh, league, we have around, let's say, 5,000, I'm, I'm calling, uh, in the men's. So uh, around 72 players, around 70 players coming each year from, so it's, you see, almost six teams, five, uh, five, six teams coming every year to the regional, then around three teams coming to the teams, I mean, a number of, of players. So generally, it's around uh, 30 players coming here and around 30 players going here. From here, from the Lithuanian basketball league, they are going to Euroleague uh, clubs, to, to different countries like Spain, like France, or whatever. So uh, we are happy with this because we always have around 30 new talented players coming to the lead division. Uh, so. Here you can see the, the, the average of the uh, They are coming being around 20 years old here, so very only, and some of these guys are coming like retired uh, uh, down from, from uh, high school. Then uh, they are playing around three years here, then going here, and then playing two more years. The most talented come here and going to the big, strong, big, uh, you know, countries in, in Europe or in state or, or in China, to China and now many players also. So you see, we we observing this very much, and we we, we should uh, be aware. Uh, I mean, how our the pyramid system works? Is it okay? Everything is a healthy system. Or not? So okay, we. This distribution of players in the first man. So you see, the, the mainly we have very young guys playing from 2024 in the first division, around 46 persons playing. Then we have uh, 25, 29, and, and only 12 uh, over 30. Uh, we uh, trying to limit. Okay, not not on purpose, but. But trying to convince our players to stay in Lithuania, not to go to United States. Uh, of course, it's their choice. No one uh, will, will forbid to go. No one. No one. If you want, you can go. But uh, we think that uh, uh, the best system is in Lithuania. And uh, we are really taking care of every single player. We are observing that, uh, these, these players and, and so on. So in, uh, like uh, 15 years ago, around 100 players from Lithuania per year went to the United States. And uh, basically, we started to decrease the number and now very few players going to the United States, very few players. And what, what is interesting, that when we decrease number to go to the United States, we're starting to win. This is the number of medals in the European Youth Championship. We, we, we started winning championships in, 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 you see, from 1995 to 2003, we got only three medals in, in two, you know, almost 10 years uh, in, in youth European championships. And when we start to decrease, we start to winning. Once we won four champ, uh, because usually a federation a delegate are sending uh, teams to six championships. So 2008, we won four medals, uh, four of six championships. Very good result. And still winning all, almost every every single year so this is uh, again uh, no one saying that you can't go to it. of course i mean this is a democratic country you, 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 it's your choice but we're trying to save our talents here in the time because we are confident that this system is uh, better basketball reference association we have around 350 licensed referees six referees International category, commissioners, uh, more than 50%, uh, very young and extremely significant contribution of regional basketball development. Because I'll tell you, uh, to, to, to sustain or to live on the referee salary, you can be only being uh, first and second division referee in Lithuania. But if you are third division or amateur uh, leagues uh, referee, you need to have a second job. And this usually is organization of some kind of basketball activities, usually. Sometimes they are just physical education teachers or whatever, but 
uh, in many cases, they're organizing clubs, youth clubs, some kind of competition, tournaments, and so on and so on. And so on. They are earning money and uh, they are living on this. And so on. Amateurs league, as I told uh, before. So in Kaunas, only in amateurs, we have more than 250 teams in Kaunas. We have 350,000 uh, people here, around maybe 40,000 students. So I can say that uh, 300,000, and we have quite many teams. In Vilnius, the amateur team, the amateur league. In Shaula, in Klaipeda, in, in, in every single town we have amateur league. So, so this is, that uh, gives a really good, uh, you know, organizational structure because youth players play in the amateur league. If you are not good to, enough to play in the uh, national uh, youth league, you play in the amateur league. So. Basketball coach association is a main factor why Lithuania basketball is strong, for sure, for for a long time, we've been having very strong coaches, well-educated coaches, and that's why I think uh, all victories of Lithuanian basketball happened. So now we have a bit more, around 400 licensed basketball coaches. 10% 10, 10 are coaching professional basketball team, 25 coaching semi-professional, 65 coaching youth teams. Uh, more than 50% of association members are quite young and 80, uh, 30 years old. And you see here uh, around uh, th one third coaching two groups, 20% uh, uh, free group. So, so this is our, our, our main coaches because it's about youth, about youth uh, basketball. So uh, here, if you're coaching only one group in the club, uh, for sure you need to have a second job and you will not to, let's say, concentrate yourself fully. So they are usually usually high high, um, uh, high 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 school uh, physical education teacher things like that. that's okay also they are contributing as well but these guys are just making uh, the, the biggest contribution on everything so important facts about some coaches uh, for youth coaches we have 230 average uh, age 43 is quite you know quite uh, experienced guys average of the coaching experience 15 years old average of the coach so okay about coach education so these four organization mainly contributing to the coach association it's a uh, coach education it's the basketball coach association sports university international basketball university and college of Kona. they also have we have two more as i said in uh Klaipeda and uh, and Shaolin, but they have only department let's say small department of, of sports science but not not uh, let's say particular focus but again some coaches are coming from these regions uh, as well so if we talk about i, I will show you what what is needed what is must to have for uh, Lithuanian coaches to become a, a coach? Not uh, because we don't have categories like uh, some other uh, other countries have, and so on. We have uh, first requirement: you need to be uh, having bachelor degree in uh, basketball uh, or in coaching science. In coaching science, so usually it's basketball. So that's why. To get bachelor degree, it's it is around uh, six hundred hours per year. Uh, no, sorry, per four year, per four year, this four years, and uh, everything include. Uh, uh, oh, you see, uh, this is like now, of course, because of pandemic, we do a lot of distance learning, but but mainly it's lectures, live like contact hours. And, and so uh so uh you see what topics we are covering during the first year of, of our studies so it's it's more preparation it's more uh, knowledge uh, fundament uh putting like introduction to the course history we are analyzing history evolution of the basketball rules uh, uh history of lithuanian basketball olympic basketball characteristic of basketball game players in different age influence of maturation and so on uh, personal development, uh, basketball technique, tactic, team tactic, and, and, and so on and so on. So it's in main introduction to the basketball sport. And here is a technique and tactic in the first year. 
Then second year, methodology of teaching, teaching uh, basketball skills, process, creating teaching, uh, uh, playing. So the ways of teaching basketball, very much important. How, how the, the process, the methodology of, of teaching. And here is training your own body. Training uh, multi-year sport, uh, multi-year uh, basketball and sport in general. Player train, players training in different ages and uh, you know period and, and so on. Uh, diagnostic, it's testing and so on. So third year, more mostly for management of basketball training. Many things, in, including that, as you can see, it's sport training technologies, uh, cycles, planning, and. and there is regeneration, management of sport training, safety in sport, and, and so on. And the fourth year, it's for coach, more coach uh, psychology, coach and coaching fundamentals. Uh, so, so this is must to have in Lithuania because without this, you cannot even start training uh, youth basketball. So uh, I think that this is contribute a lot uh, to the general system. Okay, very, very briefly, I will, I will run. We have, this is our newest arenas in the last 10 years. We built uh, six, seven new arenas and, and still building uh, with the nice capacities for, for small countries. Uh, and they became, these arenas became not only basketball uh, convention even, but uh, basically cultural centers, the concerts, all the meetings and, and big events coming here. And of course, basketball as well. Uh, projects, we have a lot of projects, in, in just promotional projects, uh, always European Championship, World Championship uh, for youth. Uh, then we have nice social uh, social uh, events, social campaigns uh, like uh, Kolkenas, I mean, former basketball uh, player and the big star uh, foundation for very sensitive uh, things like uh, youth. Uh, Kids' cancer cases and uh, Linus Kleiser, uh, Jonas Valanciunas, and everybody really contributing socially to the uh, to the life. Oh, we have a lot of cooperation, and of course, uh, we need to put uh, Filipinos friends as well here. Uh, with China, we are we are working a lot. Uh, we have a lot of different projects, and Chinese sending here youth youth players. For, we we arranging a lot of uh, clinics and, and uh, seminars and everything. Uh, we have a Spometer platform. I will, I will send maybe a link later on. It it's, it's could be very, very, I believe, interesting for you because you can compare your players without players just making uh, six tests, free uh, physical, uh, the free uh, technical skills, very simple tests. Uh, but you can uh, see which level uh, you are and which level, let's say, we or I know Serbians or United States players are huh? just comparison analysis, and you, you can always observe how your players are uh, progressing. It's totally free, totally free. I really recommend to analyze and uh, our dear friend Raymond Mercader, he knows about this uh, quite much. So, spometer.com uh, for youth, youth uh, basketball players, free of charge, ev everything. Uh, just try to. We're establishing uh, basketball schools um, uh, according to Lithuanian models. And the last one was in Shanghai, just opened it uh, maybe two weeks ago. Uh, Green Fighters. Uh, so great, great program. We, we also write uh, different uh, strategies. So we did for, for uh, China, for uh, Thailand, for many, many countries, for clubs, for municipalities. The IBU science. We do a lot of science in, in basketball science. We're publishing articles, and, and science gives us understanding where we are and what is bad in Lithuania. And, and I'll not talk uh, what is good now, but uh, what is bad. And uh, we know this. It's first is acceleration of technical preparation. We want to win as soon as possible, and we're destroying. Uh, futures, I can say, of, of some players because uh, you know to to make. Uh, uh, good players in the future in the elite basketball in, in, in professional basketball you need to have a very strong body uh, to, to, to build this strong body with the physical abilities that you will need in, 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 in basketball in the elite basketball you need to develop this physical abilities it's your own age but in your own age if you want to win then no time to, to develop this so this is always circle that you know we're trying to solve and, and this is a big problem for us 
I will, I will, I will, I will. And not only in Lithuania. For instance, Spanish football is the same. Uh, some uh, volleyball in, 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 in Poland or whatever. So this is very natural reason. I will explain. It. Right. So when we are testing, we always constantly testing. We see that uh, as a qu quantitative results, indices, it's always growing. Okay, the guy made the result uh, when they, he is uh, 13. This is one minute shooting test result. Five, eight, nine, it seems that growing, but we don't know. Okay, we, don't, we, we, we are not showing here what the results should be. We see it, it seems it's growing, you said everything nice, but we don't see that here, 15 years old, it should be 11. Here maybe 13, then 14. We don't see that while we're not trying to evaluate. This is uh, 33 throws. It seems nice, but when we are starting to evaluate and every single result, and the same in spometer, you can find it. Uh, you can evaluate from the grades from zero to 10, just every single result. And when we do this, we see that it's going down. And the best uh, shape reached 15, 16 years old because of technical acceleration. That's a very big problem in time. The same with all, with all other tests. This is evaluation from zero to 10. You see, it's like in the grade, in, in the school, you're getting grades. So, so here must be at least eight, but if you wanna get eight of this uh, one minute shooting, you, meet, you must have results of 14 points, but you have only nine. So, so this is the reasons. We are not keeping, uh, let's say, we're not gradually increasing uh, uh, numbers of games and we're talking and this you know not easy not easy to solve because sometimes the players uh, being 10 or 12 years they're playing 50 games per year here because we have a lot of competition it's good on one side but on another side we need to be patient we we, we can't uh, play two more because it's kind of uh, physiological stress uh, for for players and you know then fast fibers uh, getting slow for uh, slow fibers i mean transformation and many things so uh, one day we can talk more about this as well. So, so the main problem is that we're playing sometimes uh, too, too, too much, too, too many games. And, so and this is two philosophies of training. This is classical, I believe many of you know this. Early specialization, you get quick, quick process. Very nice uh, players in, improving technically and so on and so on. Best shape of the life reaching 15, 16 years old, as, I, as you see before. No consistent increase of quantity of games, and then you get liability to the injuries. You get a lot of, uh, let's say, big problems in, 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 in knees, in, in every way, you know, the joints. And, and another way, the right way is uh, versatile, basic general physical uh, training. Slow progress, you need to be patient, of course, and this is a big problem for, for our coach. Best sportive shape reached at 18 years old and later in physiological and uh, psychological uh, maturation, maturity, and consistent increase of the game and sporting longevity. You, you can play until 40 years old, maybe. So I just showed that. So you see, uh, this is by, by, uh, by theory, but it's, it's, it's very true. And we're talking a lot of with the coaches, and this is, uh, everybody knows, but you know, the system, because we have also problems in this, uh, when, when you have uh, state uh, basketball uh, schools, in state basketball schools, we have a salary category. You're coming to the, as a young coach, to the basketball school to get, for instance, 10% more as a salary. You need to win games. You need to win in the youth uh, local leagues, in the national youth league, and so on. So what you do? You focus on uh, technical acceleration. I mean, you, on technical preparation. And this, this uh, gives this problem that I so you see, until basically 15 years old, it should be less technical preparation, specialized technical pressure, and more physical fundament. Because basically, body is uh, formed until 16 years old. So uh, too little time for allocation of uh, development of physical abilities. And this was a jumping, uh, counter move, no, not run jump, and so on. And with the speed. It seems it's nice, it's, it's getting better and better, but when you're evaluating, and again, uh, quality, you see that you are getting less and less and less points, and this is very bad. 
So this uh, just few examples of scientific articles, and uh, this very clearly shows. So one uh, one study uh, the relationship between teams uh, team final standing uh, and individual technical skill in youth basketball. So it, it, in other words, uh, what player you need to have to win in the youth in the youth basketball in the youth basketball. So. This is strong relationship between offensive technical indicator, passing, dribbling, blah, blah, and team final sign. So it's, it's mean if you if you technically very good, you will win in the youth category. And second study, again about the college basketball. So uh, this is a relationship between athletic performance tests and playing time. So of course every coach will keep players in the professional in the elite basketball. Uh, these players on the court uh, who will play good, who are strong, who are most effective and so on. And here, as you can see, the relationship is the, the playing time correlate mostly with the leg strength, vertical jump, speed and agility. So, so these physical abilities very much important in elite basketball. In elite, of course, you should be technically good as well in the elite basket. But this uh, ability is very much important. And then what does it mean? To win, to win uh, uh, in youth age, you, you should be more technically prepared. And to win in, in elite, physically and technically. But if you want to be physically, I mean, these physical abilities that important in, in, in the professional basketball, you, the development, the sensitive periods of, of development of this, like agility, coordination, speed, force, power, until 15, 16 years old. And you, if you are not uh, paying too much attention uh, to, to develop, uh, later on is, is not easy and not possible, basically, to develop enough, uh, enough progress. To, is not impossible, it's not possible to have enough progress to, to make this player. Uh, being, uh, you know, elite. So, overloading ad adolescence is, is also a problem. Too many games, too many stress, like, you know, uh, st stress kill, uh, kills fast fibers and, and, and so on. So. And, and, you know, more, I have a lot of, lot of things here to tell, but I believe it's, it's uh, maybe enough. Uh, because uh, one day I, I will explain uh, what we are doing, like uh, in terms of uh, basketball science, uh, about the testing, modeling, individualization, load, what, how we creating a new methodics of training, how we testing these methodics, and, and, and so on and so on. So, dear friends, are you here? Are you here, dear friends? Hello. Hi. Uh, we're still here. Uh, but anyway, for those who are uh, who have some uh, questions from the social media page and for the coaches, uh, please uh, type them over in the in the chat group so we we can read them and uh, you can have your questions asked personally. But uh, Coach Louis and Coach Jong, you might as well get the ball rolling with your questions to Coach Minda. Coach Louis, your, your mic. Yeah. Hi, Coach. Thank you so much for the, that wonderful and very uh, informative uh, presentation. Uh, we really learned a lot. Okay, we, really, we were able to realize a lot of things that I think uh, will be helpful also uh, back here in the Philippines. Uh, coach, in, in, in regards with uh, coaching, uh, co coaching as profession there, uh, I've seen it that on the first year, uh, it's more on understanding the understanding the sports. Uh, yeah, why? Okay, why is it? Do you think is it important for uh, as uh, aspiring coaches to uh, to at least first understand the sports before okay, directly going to the X and O's and practice plans? Yes, it's, it's mainly uh, because uh, to understand the general trends in, uh, in sport training, 
uh, sport theory. Because basketball is kind of sport and, uh, you know, uh, in every single kind of sport, you have the same body, the same young body. And the physical loads can uh, improve, but can damage as well as this body. So, so just understanding uh, uh, what's the proper way, what is the most effective way of young body training, uh, this kind of fundamental knowledge. It must, I mean, we just start from this. Uh, without this knowledge, uh, you can have, of course, uh, understanding technical, tactical preparation and so on. But, I mean, uh, without fundament, it doesn't work. I mean, without body fundament, without uh, just understanding fundament, it will not work effective, effectively. So this is why, uh, basically, in Lithuania, in Europe, and in, in, I think, many countries, first of all, knowledge of uh, general sport training, sport science. And, and from this, you can... Uh, go to specialize. Basically, uh, from four two years, we are studying sport science, general sport science. Just understand psychology, physiology, pedagogy. All this not very interesting, maybe. And this I showed my dear friends. This I showed only in basketball specialization. So, so what what we 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 study. But besides that, we have models in in. in psychology, physiology, pedagogy, and uh, all so, so sociology. So basketball, it's around maybe half, in maximum half of, of four years uh, studies time, just particularly to basketball. The rest is building understanding in sport science, in, in sport training, and, and so on. Yeah. And my next question is, Coach, uh... Okay, uh, okay, I've seen also that uh, okay, before okay, going to the actual uh, basketball uh, ac to the actual basketball X and no strategies, plays and everything. Okay, it's there in your program also that you wanted your coaches to teach to know first, okay, ways of teaching. Uh, okay, why is it important that uh, okay, instead of just knowing the game, it's important also to learn how to teach. Yeah, uh, you know uh, the same uh, the same thing. Well, okay, uh, I, I will tell. Uh, I will start from another. What does it mean uh, talent? What does it mean talented uh, basketball play, player? It means that the, the, the guy or, or the girl that can learn something in the most short way. He's talent because he's learning quickly. Okay. So at that point. Uh, if we have uh, really high level knowledge coaching, uh, let's say from the coach side, so this guy will learn even more quicker than without these knowledges. So this all, all, all and, and we don't have uh, too much time, as you see. Uh, so we have basically five years to make fundamentals for, for, for players. And if we don't have effective uh, knowledge how to train basketball players, how what kind of physical load should be applied in order to improve him or to teach him, and if we don't know the teaching methods, the right teaching method, it's simply too late. After 15, 16 years old, just very few stars, let's say, coming to the basketball. Uh, we have, like, okay, Sabonis or, uh, you know, uh, maybe some other, they are, you know, just extremely talented because they are tall, they, 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 they are different, uh, simply. But if you take the, the mass, the, the main part of players in, in basketball, so they went through this program. So they, they got a good coaching, they, on the right time, uh, right uh, physical loads being applied, right physical abilities being developed, right technical skills and so on and so on. So this is very much important because we have limited time. We have only five, six years to, to put main fundamentals to the player and, and, it, and it decide later, uh, let's say it decide future of this player, uh, the success in the future, the elite uh, performance and, and the career. So that's why it's very much important to know, uh, to understand. It's always, you know, get, getting new things and, you know, for instance, I'll tell you, in Lithuania, 
we also had a uh, different understanding of on basketball uh, pre- the basketball players preparation 20 years ago i'll tell you it was philosophy more is better more is better it means that uh, physical loads uh, very high intensity very long practice and so on and so on and now we totally uh, see different we we just applying um, prevailing physical loads prevailing it means we are not running anymore 200 meters in, during the practices. We are running 20 meters because during the games, you will run 20 meters. And, you know, we are not jumping 10 times, you know, of, of 20 jumps. We are jumping three times of eight jumps because it's the most effective uh, methodic of training explosive power and so on. So we are improving ourselves. We are learning from each other, from, from the science and from... from from everybody. So, so that's why it's very much important, constantly learning, constantly learning, constantly analyzing, and also analyzing yourself, first of all, why we created this testing uh, platform, because it shows very clearly where you are. If you're just going with blind uh, eyes in the forest, you never find a way. So when you're testing, you see, and we very clearly declaring our problems. And it's not easy to, I mean, uh, we, we haven't solved it yet. And, and why? Because, yeah, the system constructed and uh, in this way. And politicians, they don't want to solve this. For instance, categories for youth basketball play, uh, coaches. When you're getting to the, as a young coach, I've I been young coach. I went to the state school. So in order to get better salary, I need to win with 10 years old guys. The winning is not priority in this. Uh, it shouldn't be priority in this age, but I need because I want to get, you know, 10 or 20 euros more. And this is problems that we still have. And we're trying to explain to politicians because this politician need to solve. But, uh, okay, uh, they're asking under which criteria then you decide that, uh, uh, let's say, uh, this coach should get a better salad. Testing, one of the criteria, but who will make testing of 10,000 or 20,000 kids? And uh, just to make uh, objective evaluation of, of the progress. So we have this program. We are not hiding. We're just uh, talking here in Lithuania. We, we're just showing not to make the same, uh, let's say, failings to other uh, other countries and so on. But yeah, we have we have problems. Self-analysis, critical review, critical reflex, uh, reflection on yourself and on the environment is very much important. It gives you a chance to improve, to progress. And, and that's it. And learning is very much important. Thank you, Coach. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Coach Louis. Coach Jong, uh, you have some questions for Coach Minda? Uh, uh, yes, sir. I have, a, I have a few questions. You mentioned that uh, you only have a window of five years to develop a player. And uh, uh, if they come to you like 16 years old, it might be too late already in general. Uh, so what age do you think, in your experience and in your science, in your knowledge, uh, do a country should start uh, selecting or starting a youth, basket, a youth player in basketball to get to that window of five years? Yeah, uh, thank you very much for the question. So uh, I'm talking about critical time. Critical yeah. time, which mainly deciding uh, your future. So it is uh, around from from uh, 10 to 15 years. I mean, from 10 years old to 15 years old. And it's not too late to come even 10 or, or, or 12 uh, if you are really talented guy. I mean, physically, first of all, physically. Physical fundament basically uh, decide uh, in majority cases that if you simply who are the best players, who are faster, who jump higher, and of course, technically good, but technical preparation, you can improve later. Being 20, 25, you can spend thousands of hours per year, maybe, you know, in the gym, and and your technical, uh, let's say, uh, fundament will improve. But physical fundament, you will not improve uh, jumping ability or, or explosive power being 25 years dramatically. Drama, you will improve. And I have a lot of scientific articles with two, three, maybe five centimeters, but not critical. So uh, the critical time, uh, I believe it's from 10 to 15 years old, because before that, uh, basically, 
in Lithuania, uh, it's, 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 it, we are not requiring any results from, from youth coaches. I mean, two, they are coming, usually kids coming being eight years old, seven, eight years old. So two first year, just introduction to the sport. They deciding, uh, do they like sport or not? Generally, do they like basketball? And they are migrating from one sport to another sport, you know. And so, so 10 years old, the guy who really knows that basketball is fit to him, uh, then five years are crucial uh, to, to put physical fundament. I mean, still, as you've seen here in, in the slides, uh, still you can uh, very significantly improve uh, quickness, agility, speed, explosive power. These uh, four physical abilities that you will need later on. And of course, later on, you need to focus on of keeping this and improving even, but this uh, period gives most of uh, result, let's say, most of progress. So, so yeah, I think it's, it's like this, but later on technical preparation, always uh, not too late, always good to focus and even being 25 or, I don't know, uh, you still can significantly improve your, your technical uh, skills. Uh, thank you, Coach. Therefore, your emphasis of your coaching uh, knowledge or coaching people, that is your, uh, how do you say, your target market should be the youth coaches, correct, Coach? Uh, say it again, please. Uh, therefore, if the, mm -hmm. if the critical selection of players is in the youth side, therefore, the critical uh, coaches in a program should be in the youth also. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Of course, of course. Very, very right uh, notification. But, you know, so from selection, for selection should be made in the first stage from six to 10 years old. So you are selecting, let's say, 100, because I will tell you my example. When I came to the basketball, being six years old, we, we, we've been maybe 60 guys in the gym, 60 guys, 60 small kids, like, like. So after first practice, uh, maybe we already had uh, 50, after third, 40, and in one year we had 20. So from this 20, uh, after one year, until uh, during the next three years, I think maybe we became only 12 or 15 in, 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 in the gym. So from this 15, I believe I'm, I'm also, I'm not talented in basketball. I don't have fast mm -hmm. fibers and so, so you see. So from this uh, 12, uh, I can say who wish to play. So maybe one was really talented guy who played in, in the professional basketball. From 60, that came. So that's why very much crucial to take as many kids, young kids to the first stage and to select these who, some of the very talented guys just, they, they didn't wish to play basketball and they want some wealth. So you see, selection is a very complicated thing. And only one guy went to a professional of 60 from the first day. So yes, this is very, very much important to be, and okay, how you make selection? This is another thing. So how I, 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 I came to basketball? I was sitting in the first uh, grade school and, uh, you know, uh, uh, coach came to the to the class. Coach came to the class and said, "Okay, guys, we have a nice gym. We have a nice program. Blah blah. Who wants to care? Everybody. I want. You know, basketball is big here. So, 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 coach invited everybody. Then he went to the uh, to the teacher and uh, okay, teacher, who is the fast, most fast in this class? Who is the most most tall in this class?" Who's most smart in the class? Okay, this, 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 this. Then he, maybe if he, if this guy didn't raise hand, he said, okay, look, come, come to, to that. He said, I, I don't know, I don't. Okay, teacher, give me his uh, mother number. Call, okay, mother, uh, look, come to basketball. Just, if he doesn't want, no problem, but maybe he like. So, you know, selection is, is very hard, hard job. And during this kind, you get, the biggest, the tallest guy, the most fast guy, the most smart guys, and maybe the guys who has most desire to play basketball. You know, this is also very much important, you know, and from all these big numbers, you get one talent, maybe. maximum right. one talent. Right. 
So, so, and this is basically very uh, well done in Lithuania because that's why, I mean, we are a small country. We don't have, what is it? In Kaunas, we have, I will tell you, in Kaunas, we have uh, 50 schools, 50, five, zero. So in Kaunas, we have uh, around uh, eight different youth clubs. So I can tell you that these eight youth clubs going through the same schools, every single coach to the same class and saying, okay, I, I'm already attending in, the, for instance, Saboni school. Oh, okay, no, no problem. You know, but maybe someone wants to try in Tornado or no, in Perkunas. And so you see, selection is 50% of your success because if you're getting a very talented physically guys, you can put technique, tactic, understanding, and everything later on without any problem. But, but this is something... Uh, from birth, I can say, and this you cannot change too much. All right, thank you, coach. Very enriching. <laughs> thank you very much, Coach Jong. Uh, we now will move on to our uh, uh, coaches uh, in the Zoom conference. Coach Shot Tankinsen, uh, you may open your camera and ask your questions. Coach Shot. Coach Shot. <laughs> Yes, uh, yes. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> they, I'm having a hard time using this. Anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, coach, I want to follow up on that, uh, the question Coach Jong asked earlier about the window from 10 to 15 years old. You, you mentioned that it's most critical, correct? So yes. is, the, is the training of this age, you said, because you only have that window of opportunity, to increase their speed, strength, agility, power, and quickness. So having said that, is the training supposed to be geared towards more strength and conditioning? Because that's the, that's the window that is open. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you very much. I mean, uh, this is not uh, decided by Lithuanian and uh, basketball season. It's decided by physiology of... of uh, players and you know uh, another thing you should see we have rather dance we have accelerates uh, kids i mean these guys who are uh, matu ma getting matured more fast and m m more slow so it's, it's a lot of things inside even this i i cannot just cut okay 10 to 15 this is not, no no this is this is what need to be focused and when you can uh, improve these physical abilities, which you will need in uh, elite basketball. So you are putting fundamental. Of course, later on, a lot of different things. It's not, I'm, I, I'm, I don't want to say that only five years is deciding. No, no, but this is very much important. Maybe 50% of your success will be made, uh, you know, during these five years, because if you make uh, the, 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 the player, to be fast, uh, uh, explosively powered, and so on. So you you have very strong tools in your hands. You have you have uh, something that will is that already deciding uh, elite players. Uh, let's say effectiveness, playing effectiveness. You know, first jump, rebounding, uh, sprint, everything on based on physical. We are we are saying that basketball is a track and field athletic just with a ball. So our strength conditioning coach is saying this, and this, this is very right, because I mean everything decide on on your quickness, uh, you know, jumping and so on, and later on basketball technique. Of course, without shooting, you never win. Without making shots, without uh, but then defense. If you are strong, defense will be better. If you are quick, you will get advantage in the first step in front of your opponent, and so on. everything decide by your physical ability, basically, and sure understanding, tactic, technique, but this is something that you will have time more, uh, even, even later. You, you will have time to improve this and this psychological, uh, you know, things for players and so on. So, but by physiology, by sports science and by uh, studies and researches, you can see that uh, something time from 10 to 15 mostly fit to develop and improve physical abilities. So that's why I'm, I'm just trying to, to show it, but I'm not saying that, okay, it's impossible before or after to, to make a program. Of course, possible, and especially uh, taking in account particular player, because 
uh, I'll tell you one example. Maybe you know the the the, the most known and the biggest, uh, let's say, uh, the most titled uh, player in Lithuania who won Olympic Games champions, not Sabonis. It is Modestas Paulauskas, who is still alive and very active and so on. It was in Soviet Union times. That's why we are not promoting so much. But he was a captain of Soviet Union team, a champion of uh, Munich Olympic Games in uh, 1972, maybe two times at least world champions, maybe six times European champion and so on. And he has a son. His son now, 24 years old, and he's extremely talented, but he's very late maturation, retardant. So just this year, being 24, he entered first division. I mean, the highest professional league. So uh, he's two meters 10. For sure, he will be national team players, maybe being 30 years or old, because he's late maturation. But he has excellent shot. He, he's quick. He's he's super player. But you know, I cannot put in these rules him because it's okay. It's too late. No, but uh, Paulauskas, he, he's a smart guy. Uh, he, he was focusing to develop strength, physical fundament, even after 15 years old. No, we see he's like kid, you know, you, you're skinny, tall, and so on. So, yeah, he was patient enough to, to focus on that, and now he's brilliant player. Brilliant player, and he will be national team player. So you, that's why we need to learn from each other and so on, and, you know, this... Uh, critical reflection uh, helps to understand, okay, this prospect, uh, this type, this another type, and so on. But in general, what says physiology, science, and so on, it says that 15 to, uh, to 10 to 15 years old, the most, uh, let's say, physical development effective uh, period. This, this is what I'm trying to say. Uh, yes, yes, coach. I, I, I thank you for that answer. And uh, I just want to ask some more how, how you could el elaborate it a little bit more. This, I'll be honest, this is something that might, you know, is a, is a game changer for me because I've always thought that, you know, I have to be careful, especially dealing with kids about 10 to 12 years old, because I, I have that tendency, I don't want to burn them out too much physically that would cause them to have injuries further down the road if they get older. So I'm pretty sure you guys have uh, backed this up with, with science. And uh, so now I want to ask, how do you balance it? Because, you know, kids are still growing, but at the same time, yes, you need to push them to get uh, them to maximize their like you said, their, their speed, agility, and quickness and strength. How, how, what, the, what, does, what does the science tell you? How much can we push? So it's, it's always a challenge for us as well, as, as I showed. You know, this is, this is the same problem. I mean, uh, even especially in the private sector, in the private schools, to keep uh, kids in the, in the club, you need to give him to play. You need to, to have a competition. And so, because this is their understanding. I, I came here for playing basketball, not for running, you know, and not for jumping. I came here for, for winning games. So um, it is possible. Uh, okay, we, we are creating some methodics. Uh, it is one of the way to uh, improve fitness through basketball uh, practices. And we have Professor Polauskas, basically, he's focusing a lot. He's creating methodic and so on. But this is uh, about the duration of uh, drills because uh, uh, in order not to train speed endurance but speed you need to have a, a drill lasting no not longer than uh, five six seconds and later on uh, to have a recover you know so uh, recover it means that uh, he 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 take a rest a little bit not again immediately running and so on and so on because if you run uh, let's say 30 meters uh, 10 times in a row, you, you, you will be training uh, speed endurance, yes? But if you run, uh, th uh, let's say, 30 meters 10 times with a break of one minute, with a full recovery, you'll be training speed. 
you'll be improving speed and you can give a ball and and you know and, and then just to to organize everything in the way uh, not uh, that prevailing physical load prevailing it's mean if you take 90 minutes of the bracket would not be endurance or or or, or speed endurance or so on and at the same time, they can train, uh, you know, uh, speed and, and explosive power through basketball, but with the right, uh, let's say, with the right placing of, of, of drills, with the right duration, with the right recovery, and so on and so on. But this is one of the way we, we have simultaneous uh, training method. One day, uh, I, I will send um, this presentation of Pulasa. It could be as an option. It could be as an option, and, and this is a good option. But anyway, at least two times, better three times uh, per week, uh, you need to focus on uh, just fitness uh, training sessions uh, in, I mean, in the year, uh, uh, in the age until uh, 15 years old. And in some way, it can be a good solution uh, for, for clubs. And here they are doing, because usually uh, to hire basketball, to, to, to rent a basketball court or, or gym it costs but for physical training basically it doesn't cost you can go outside and, and train i mean to have it for zero cost and if you explaining in the right way for the kids and especially kids likes improvement obvious obvious uh let's say progress uh numbers so that's why we created spometer.com because here every month you can make the same testings and to show look guy you jumped uh, maybe 30 centimeters uh, two months ago now you uh, 32 now you 44 uh, 34 and this is your now goal 35 and so on I mean, they get motivated through this and if you're observing if you're making testing if you're showing to the guy and this is our goal for for next uh, months two months and so on to make stronger and so on. and they starting to feel this that okay it, it works i mean i'm getting more rebounds i'm better in defense i'm more fast in the offense and so on so so this is my ideas and what we do let's say uh, in, in some here locally i believe it can work everywhere thank you thank you coach ah uh, dito muna ako baka meron pang magtatanong <laughs> ah kaya <laughs> okay, th thanks, Coach Shot. Um, uh, my, my, uh, the next batch of questions is from uh, uh, Coach Potit de Vera. Uh, Coach, uh, Coach Minda, uh, wh what is the reason why you have projects in China or is that for China? Yeah, so with China, we started to cooperate uh, maybe 15 years ago, very intensively. And um, they're taking quite many coaches from Lithuania to China. I mean, they're offering really much better uh, financial condition, for instance. To start coaching here, uh, you, in the best way, uh, when you start, you get maybe six, 700 euros. China uh, salaries uh, starts from $2,000. So it's okay, 1,800 uh, euros immediately. Uh, but the problem is that not too many coaches wants to go to China from Lithuania because uh, there is no, you know, sportive, uh, there's no sportive side, it's more physical education, you know, it's more like fun, but not. Uh... So these coaches who wants to, who are looking for uh, better salaries, they, are, they can have an uh, option to go to China and this wants to focus on the result. And then uh, you can say here. So uh, we are working with Beijing Sport University, with Shanghai Sport University, with some private clubs and so on. So what we do with them? Uh, we do events, we do educational uh, projects, uh, like uh, just recently, last uh, th this week, we finished World Basketball Forum, second, second event. Uh, then they are sending uh, Chinese kids here to Lithuania. Uh, I have some more video. Uh, I can even... So, okay, it's, it's, uh, I mean, they're sending most talented guys here to Lithuania. They're giving uh, financial support to them. We do everything. We do education. We do, we do training with the best Lithuanian coaches. Uh, we do uh, just uh, some kind of um, basketball experience uh, events. We go to EuroLeague games. You know, it's, it's different environment for them because in China, they would not, uh, meet this, they, not, they would not find in the way that we can present. And this small country, small town, uh, 
with you know without big troubles you can find a lot of opponents to play and so on and so on. So they found it as a really good way of, of young talent development. And we had two years in a row this project because of pandemic and now they quit, but I believe they will come back. So this is mainly talents development, uh, coaches education and so on. And of course, uh, opportunities. Uh, I believe that um, uh, for, for all of us, we would need countries, big markets uh, like, you know, China, the same like you are guys. Uh, to come and to be more even better in basketball because, uh, you know, in Europe is always a rival between football and basketball in Europe. And usually basketball is losing, usually. But we have United States where basketball is better. Uh, and we, if we have strong markets in, in, in Asia, so basketball as a kind of sport is, 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 it can get even in the same level as, as, as football. So for us, it, it would be very good message and uh, good news because then more sponsors, more money. Uh, you know, you take take football. Uh, Lithuania uh, being one uh, hundred, maybe fifth in the world in the rating FIFA, they're getting nine million. Get uh, doing nothing. Get uh, coming from uh, FIFA because they have funds. They have Lithuania being in basketball in the best five or best three, getting zero from FIFA because they, they are not earning money. So uh, this is a comparison uh, situation and you can see, so uh, getting more powerful countries uh, like China, like Philippines, like maybe Indonesia or whatever, with a big population and so on to, to basketball uh, would bring more money, simply. And uh, this, okay, this is big picture, but in small picture, we're just helping them to, to develop talents. And, uh, it's it's very interesting program by the way. China Basketball College call and our dear friend Raimor Mercader he he seen here and he was so. okay. Thank you, Coach. Uh, another question here for, uh, from from uh, Coach Potit. Um, are local government funding the state uh, basketball clubs? Are local government mandated to support development uh, or develop basketball clubs in their own cities? So, uh, as I told, uh, in municipality level, municipality, I, I, I believe local, you mean municipality, not national. Yes. So, if it's a local, uh, we talk about municipality. So, municipality supports, fully support, 100% support uh, municipality sports school and also have, uh, has a, a kind of funding, we call it non-formal funding, uh, education, non-formal education, 15 euros per kid, giving to every single kid uh, of this municipality. And if this kid going to musical school, uh, musical school is getting this 15 uh, euro. If uh, football, then football. And if uh, the guy coming to basketball, so uh, municipality giving this 15 euros uh, to basketball. I mean, the kid has 15 euros to spend per month to any, any of uh, sport or education or, or arts and so on. But besides that, he can go just simply to the state school. In, for instance, in, in Kaunas, we have a municipality basketball school. And we, besides that, we have maybe six, I think, six private schools, basketball schools. So if, if, if the kid goes to the uh, state school, no one gets this 15 euro. But if he goes to some private school, this club gets 15 euro from municipality. So it's a it's good, uh, good model, I, I can say. And it's, it's, it's improved very much situation of uh, private basketball schools here in Victoria. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Coach, for answering those questions. Our next question is uh, from Coach Raymond Mercader. Uh, Coach Raymond, can you turn on your camera? Coach Raymond? Coach Raymond, are you there? Hello, Coach? Yes, Coach. Uh, uh, it's better siguro na I say it in, in Tagalog to support the, the presentation and the answers of Mindaugas for 
for those questions na tinanong kanina. Okay. Uh, siguro, uh, we, we all know right now that Lithuanian success is, is more on the support of the government and private sectors, the facilities, and also their well-educated coaches and their very sustainable and sustainable and very productive in youth basketball training. So, kanina sa mga tanong kanina na I, I just like to add because uh, those questions are are answered at saka I am the at nung pumunta akong Lithuania, doon ko nalaman at naintindihan kung bakit ganun. Kasi yun din yung tanong sa isip ko eh. Kasi 10 to 15 years old is very critical. It's because uh, during, according to their studies, because Lithuanian basketball is very, very methodic. May mga method sila na ginagamit, saka very scientific and research-based yung ginagawa nila sa mga athletes nila. So every single year may, may record sila na talagang tinitignan nila kung anong kulang at saka yung kailangan pang improve ng mga players nila. So, kaya yung 16 kasi na edad, according to Lithuania Studies, is yun yung mahirap na turuan ng mga bata sa kanila. According to their studies, is 16 years old below. And even, uh, up. And even sa atin, si pag medyo malaki na, eh, mahirap ng turuan. At the same time, at the same time, ah, uh, those 10 to 15 years old, uh, yung sinasabi ni Coach Chot, uh, in a, in talks about strength and conditioning. As Mindaug has mentioned kanina, is that when we talk about, like for example, running or DKI jumping, um, they are more on the uh, repetition na instead of doing a lot of jumping, they are limited into tatlo lang. But with sets. So, bawat sets, like for example, eight sets, tatlong beses lang sila tatalon. O di kaya yung, yung tatakbo sila is yung, yung usual na gagamit sa basketball. It's the 20 meters, yung layo ng tinatakbo nila. So, uh, sa pagbubuhat naman, yung sa pagbubuhat nila is hindi yung, hindi yung matagal. Eh, kunting repetition lang. Tapos, yung parang mabilis lang. Okay, so, uh, I'd like to add also, uh, when it comes to uh, development nila, kasi may, may, kasi pag 16 years old ka na, kapatas, it's, I think they are more focused on the techniques and tactics. Ang ibig sabihin ni Mindaugas nung dun sa Lithuania is the critical na critical na uh, stage ng mga athletes is 15 pa baba is that uh, nung, anong Tagalog nito uh, is that we should focus more on the fundamentals and the basic that's what it means like, like for example on jumping okay okay and and of course in in 16 up kaya sila mas matalino maglaro kasi nagawa na nila yung yung dapat gawin nila sa pagpunta na ng 16 years old so, dun sa 15 pa lang nagawa na nila lahat sorry guys yeah at charge ko lang sagli yeah yes, yeah coach uh, yeah coach uh, if pa if I may ask again, Coach Minda. Okay, from uh, okay, okay, basing on Coach Raymond's uh, uh, sharing. Uh, once you entered, okay, before entering that critical age, okay, from okay, what you're called, you're saying it the critical age that from ten to fifteen years old. Okay, yes. okay, what do you do? Okay, prior to that, for those kids, okay, from six to ten years old. Okay, in preparation, okay, of your program. Okay, going yes. toward that critical age groups. Okay. Yeah. So, it, so in this, from six to ten, it's basically uh, purely fun, mm. fun or physical activity. Just enjoy, 
enjoy, of course, uh, teaching some uh, very, very small basics of, of uh, catching ball, passing, but not uh, focusing on development. Because from 10, you are try, starting to focus on development, physical abilities. You start training. Before mm. that, it's more fun. You know, just, of course, uh, through fun, you teach some basketball fundamentals. How to how to keep ball, how to, because, you know, they're starting to shoot, they're starting to play and so on. But you, we are not focusing too much on improvement and development because it's already focused training. It's more fun, fun for kids because what? See, eight years old, what training you can apply or nine? They are kids. Mm -hmm. They are coming to have a physical education, physical mm -hmm. uh, activity. That, that, that's the main, with the basketball. And then you see if he likes basketball, if he fit to basketball, what is kind of, you know, strong sides, weak sides, you can already know better him. So, so, like, yeah. so focusing more on okay, motor skills, okay, yeah, improving yeah, the motor on skills, skills. Okay, sure. with the yeah. basketball. Yes, yes. Just yeah. fun. Mm -hmm. Physical activity. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, uh, Thank you, Coach Louis. Uh, Coach uh, Raymond, you have uh, other things to add? Uh, I'd like to add, siguro, uh, uh, maybe Mindaugas uh, would explain this. Uh, aside of uh, training, uh, Min Minda, uh, can you share with us when it comes of physical abilities, training general, and general technical abilities and advanced technical abilities or maybe in the next the next topic or no, today is, uh, no, today is not enough time to cover everything but we yeah. can have a discussion i will i will i will invite my colleagues uh, to speak uh, because I, i'm not expert of everything i'm, I'm just trying to uh, you know to to show general picture what what i'm analyzing but maybe for uh, fitness prepare for technical uh, we, we have Lithuanian guys who would share, who would advise maybe, and who, who would uh, show what, what they are doing. So, sure, maybe we, we can could invite Dr. Rutianis next time. Yes, yes. Rutianis, yeah. yes. Rutianis, Professor Masulis for fitness. For, yeah. For, 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 yeah, sure. Yeah. I also nervous. Yeah, yeah. We, we will do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> thank for you, sure. coaches. Thank you. Milda, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ravi. Okay, uh, we have another question. We have another question here uh, from uh, Coach Arwin Adina. Coach Arwin, are you online? Uh, you can answer your. You can ask your question already. Please turn on your camera and mic. Coach Arwin. Coach Arwin. Hello, coach. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to the next question. Uh, um, for a while. Uh, uh, the next question is uh, from uh, from uh, from Jerry uh, Penamante. Uh, coach Jerry, can you turn on your mic and... Uh, and uh, video. Yes, coach. Can I start with? Yes, you can turn on your camera, coach. Yes, yes. Coach, you can ask. You, you can Hello? ask your question already. Hello, coach. Anyway, my my video is not functioning. Can I just raise a question? Sure. Uh, my question is, is there any platform or how, what is the platform that uh, that the Lithuanian ball club make uh, uh, connections with the local gober local municipalities, I mean, the local authorities? How, what is the platform? Okay, thank you very much. Good, good question. So it's simply, uh, simply we have... Um, kind of funds and they uh, kind of uh, announcing tenders and you can apply for funding your sport 
or basketball or any other activity. So we have separate for basket for sports, not not for bad, but for sports. And a lot of application coming to this fund. The fund is managed by municipality, and uh, uh, in municipality level. Also, we have in uh, educational ministry we have education, uh, science, and the sport ministry. Uh, these three subjects in in one in one ministry. So they have sport fund where you also can apply. So basically you have two options, apply to the municipality level, local level, and to the national level for funding your sport activity or basketball activity and so on. It doesn't, doesn't uh, mean that you will get this uh, money, but uh, you have big, big uh, possibility to get part of the money that you will need for some club, uh, you know, development or some competition or some tournament organization and so on and so on. I will tell you, uh, the total budget is from states that coming to sport, uh, let's say fund, it is 9 million euros. But of these nine, I believe we have elite sport, we have massive sport, we have uh, kind of scientific uh, events and so on and so on. So, you, you can get some fun. You can get uh, youth, youth schools always getting, I can say, but not, not okay, big money. So it means that uh, we can talk one day about the youth uh, club. So in general, uh, youth club uh, budget per year uh, to keep uh, something like 600 uh, kids, it's around 500,000 euros. So from, from these funds, you can get from national, like 10% of your budget, like 50,000. And from local, you have a bit more, like, like 15 to 20. So you see around, even being private, you can expect to be supported around 30% of your needs, financial needs from, from governmental funds, municipality. And, and so this like this. this, this network creates through fundings, uh, just, you applying, writing about your project, you are showing what expenses, what incomes you have, and so on, and they decide. Thank you very much, host, and thank you, coach. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, coach, for that question. Uh, our next question is from, um, wait a minute, huh? so many questions here. <laughs> okay, uh, our next question is from, uh, Mar, Mar, Coach Marjon Garcia, Coach Marjon, Coach Marjon, can you turn on your uh, mic, Coach Marjon, and camera? Okay, uh, mukhang wala pa. But uh, let's move on to the next, uh, Coach Enrico Manalo, are you here? Please turn on your uh, camera and uh, and and microphone. Coach Enrico. Hello, Coach. Uh, good afternoon, po. Yes, Coach. Uh, go on with yeah. your question. Mm -hmm. uh, my question for Coach Mindo is. Uh, uh, what did uh, the Lithuania did to make their players um, stay in their country and not play for abroad? You know, uh, with the, with their talent, they can earn bigger if they play for another country. So, what was the did the did, did Lithuania subsidize the, the the great players of their country? Yeah, thank you. Good question. Very good question. Uh, I mean, we we are trying to explain. Uh, we, we are not subsidizing. No, no. Okay, subsidizing. I can tell you uh, that it could be named as like this, uh, like basketball clubs uh, applying for state uh, funding in this sport fund and, and so on, getting fund and then paying to the Youth, youth players not to go to state. Let's say it could be said in this way, but generally uh, no one's staying here for money, no one. 
uh, everybody staying who are not, let's say, going to United States uh, and very few going now to United States uh, because they have better opportunity to become a professional player. Uh, coming, uh, being here, you will, will be observed by agent. You will get a very clear statistic uh, playing time and so on. I mean, so for agent uh, later on, basically now every every youth player has agents here and this is another problem for us but okay you will not uh, solve you know all everything in one one day but uh we are solving it uh, we are educating agents by the way we are trying to make them more uh to be more responsible for in front of everybody here and especially in front of player so Simply, the main motivation comes that players uh, fi find more opportunity to become professional players being in Lithuania. Because here you can go, uh, you have a lot of options. If you are good, uh, not the best, but good level, uh, average level, you can go to Latvia, Estonia, Belarus well, to become. If you are more talented, you go to Spain or, or, or France or, or whatever. And if you are super talented, you always can go to, to MBA because MBA observing every single talent here. So the main motivation to go to United States is, is uh, education, is, is university degree. But as, as you've seen, uh, we also encouraging uh, local universities to offer a uh, degree here. Uh, we, because before that, we had a system that in students league, uh, no, no, any professional players could play. Like from from the first and from the second division, uh, we we didn't allow to play. But later on, we see that we need to give us uh, this opportunity for study. So uh, now we have no limit in the students leagues. Everybody uh, can play from like professional play. and player or Euroleague players from Zalgiris. They are coming to play in the student league. It's it's not too many games like. Uh, maximum once per two weeks, I think they are coming to play for the university. Not playing main role, but just just you know coming to the gym, spending 10, uh, 10 minutes and securing themselves, uh, to preventing uh, you know from injuries. And it's enough because it's good promotion. Yearly guy coming to the local university game here, so more more people coming to watch and so on and so on. And this way we we solved we we. we Fully solve this okay, thank you very much uh, for for that answers, Coach. Uh, our next question is from uh, Coach Arwin Adina. Uh, Coach Arwin, please turn on your camera and the uh, mic. Okay, um, this is for Coach Minda. Uh, your program is very impressive, detailed, and intricate. Uh, we're jealous, actually. <laughs> okay, anyway, my question is. Do you think that Lithuanian basketball system can be a generic thing? I mean, can it be adapted across all countries in youth? Do we have an extensive study there that it can be adapted generally among youth across the world. I'm speaking about the physiological aspect of it. Uh, as you know, uh, Filipinos are not that tall. So there goes my question. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very good question also. Uh, you know, it cannot be uh, copy-paste uh, made, I believe. It cannot because, you know, this is very, very different environments and sizes. and everything. But some points for sure uh, can be implemented. And the first thing is, in my opinion, co co coaches preparation way. Uh, first thing, and this is the main thing, because later on, uh, I believe... When 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 coach uh, see uh, deep uh, deeper, let's say when 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 he understand deeper basketball and so on, so uh, then the size of the country, all other things will not be uh, crucial and uh, most important because you will find a way to solve these problems simply. So uh, <clears throat> in that point, we had very good examples in Lithuania uh, that having no equipment, no any facilities, coaches reached a really good result because of knowledge, first of all. And knowledge at that point designed uh, quite much. So my advice would be first to focus on, let's say, sharing this 
uh, information, uh, not, not, not on IBU only or whatever, but uh, we have a lot of free access information, uh, store scientific information, you know, which would be very valuable for any coach uh, in any level. So in that point, the, the first thing uh, is, is about uh, just knowledge. Uh, of course, you are very good in, in all the tactical, technical things and so on, but I believe that knowing more about this, uh, sports science uh, and multi-year basketball, youth basketball uh, players, young body, and so on and so on. So it could could even improve, you know, your uh, even current level. So, so at that point, I believe that this is the first thing. The rest, of, of course, competitional system. It's not legal, easy applicable because we are a small country. You are a big country, but in regional parts, of course, it it could be uh, applied. You know uh, this this thing because then you, you Philippines huge country and all the Iceland and so it's not easy to communicate uh, to reach. Uh, I I fully understand. It's the same like in China, Shanghai one town is at as ten Lithuanians. So you know how how to do this, uh, and it's not not uh, easy to to apply. But I believe knowledge is this, the first my advice and and all the tra- testing. Uh, analysis and so on, something that would get next step uh, forward. This, this is my understanding. But, but the, what we need to learn from you is the, your, your passion for basketball. We need uh, to, to learn from, from your coaches. And I'm, I'm, I'm just so much happy to know people in the Philippines who, who loves basketball just every single second. So this is something that we are losing because, you know, we becoming more focused on, on, on salaries and everything and so on and on conditions and, and so on. And it's, it's, I see we, we have these cultural problems here in Lithuania. This is my reflection. This is my, my what, what on my head now. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you again. And then our next question is from uh, Coach uh, Mark Atoms Balabat. Coach Mark. Hello, Coach Mark. Are you still there, Coach Mark? Okay, um, I think we have to move on to the next question. Um, coach Shot, baka may gusto ko yung dagdag. <laughs> Sorry, Coach. I'm very inquisitive. Sa Tagalog, makulit. Uh, coach, you mentioned the spoon meter. Uh, the, does, this, does this also apply to the kids that are 10... To 15 years old, let's, let's say, for example, okay, you need to be able to jump this high for kids that are 10 years old. You need to be able to run this fast for kids that are 12. Does that does the spoon meter include those uh, standards built into it? If you may, I will show immediately now. Uh, if, it, if I can share a screen, if I can share screen, I'll show you how to work. Can I share? Okay. So this is very simple. Uh, Spometer.com. And you come here. Here, how it works. How do you, you registering organization. You can link as many teams as you wish. Uh, you can uh, upload as many players uh, as you wish. Uh, then you here have uh, ratings uh, in different uh, different tests. Overall, six tests: free for f- fitness, free for skills, uh, technical skills. I mean, we made it uh, as as short as possible testing process. So I'm 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 now making um, around uh, twenty players in ninety minutes. So it, it doesn't disturb uh, disturb your uh, training uh, process and so on with a simple. The simple equipment, the most uh, complicated equipment is uh, jump and reach. But uh, I'm using the opto jump platform, which is expensive, but you can do it. No, jump and reach that simply. And for kids, it will be uh, okay. Here, here you see the um, training programs, and we will upload more. But for agility, for every single, uh, this is very simple. We, we, we still. Uh, we're still working on that, and you can find the training programs in different pages. But what is the most important when you log in? Uh, 
One second, one second. When you log in, you, you will find a lot of information. Uh, uh. Do you see me? Yeah, okay. the spot meter is, is very good, coach. Thank you so much. No, 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 no. I, I'm just uh, sh showing. So, um, for instance, I don't remember now which. Ah, okay, what, what, one second. Give me one second and. Uh, uh, Okay, one second, one second. I will share another another uh, screen, and you will. I want to show if we have time because this is something that can help you. Oh. Okay, I'm sharing uh, another screen. Okay, here. When you come, you see now, yeah. Yes. Yeah, when you come to the login, uh, you 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 signing up first. You putting all the ah, what is here? I think maybe the internet is not and then it's sharing. So uh, when you go inside, I, I'm just saying you. When you go inside, you will have maybe construction. So you will find very clear intervals intervals uh, in which you must fit in okay so so then you making a testing and uh, uh, putting your and uh, and uh, the system automatically automatically uh, evaluate your results okay appreciate it coach yeah in please. line with my in line with my question, coach, because you mentioned about the number of games limit for, yeah, for age, age group 10 under, 11 under, 12 under. Uh, do you, based on your science, is, is there a number of limited games? Or what I mean is, is there a max games that you see kids start to dip in their performance? Is there, an, let's say, for example, for kids 12, Okay, you in a year you might don't want to let them play more than fifty games. And are are there are those games inclusive of the because you, you understand there's practice games and there's actual games as well. So is there a maximum limit based on your science that you, you guys study? Yeah, but this is from general sports science because uh, I will tell you what does mean game. A uh, real basketball game for a young uh, boy. So, first of all, uh, the prevailing physical load is endurance. You are running one side back and so on. You are not uh, resting enough and so on. And so, you are developing endurance. You are killing fast fibers. Then, uh, usually, very usually, it's psychological stress. Some, some uh, young kids, they don't have. Uh, enough uh, skills to play basketball well and so on and so on. So they are losing uh, losing balls, they are missing uh, shots and they, they get disappointed and so on. And so it's it's more from this side. And uh, uh, sure, game is, is very much important part of training, very much important. But uh, I mean, you cannot overload uh, kids with this, especially in your age, because uh, they will lose uh, motivation of, of the games. If they are not successful, if they're losing too much, and so on and so on and and game should be like a celebration you know we call it so it's it's more about this okay appreciate it coach in the uh but the well maybe you could throw some numbers to us maybe that will help us as well as coaches because here in the philippines we have that uh, mentality more games better for us we improve better <laughs> yeah ga game what does mean game game is mean uh, technical acceleration you know Technical, fully technical acceleration. So, so in that point, I, I will show you uh, one slide. This is not my slide. I, I select. I don't want to, you know, uh, talk on on my only my research and so on. No, no. So if you, okay, one second. 
if you take a look to this, this very classical, very classical. Uh, one second, one second, just something. Uh, okay, how I can share screen first. Sharing screen here. Um, this very uh, classical, uh, let's say, way of understanding, and this is general sports science. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, I know, not used too much uh, to work online. So, so I, I can share this, by the way, this presentation with you. Yes, please. Uh, and I recorded everything. I recorded everything. So I, I, will, I will send the links, but here, oh, what you, oh, here. So you can see, this is from Milanovic. This is from uh, Croatian scientist. A uh, very, very famous scientist and Tudor Bomb and every so you see, this is here because before 10 years, no one too much focusing on any numbers, it's more, more fun. Three times per uh, week, physical training, and so on. So, here you see days of practice per year, hours of practice, uh, a time allocated for physical fitness, special preparation, technical training, uh, theoretical, uh, number of games, testing, and so on and so on. And this is, you can, you can see. Even technical training, it, it not always mean only, let's say that focusing on um, uh, technical skills. I mean, through technicals, maybe some teaching very light without intensity and so on and so on. And you will find more. Uh, Tudor Obompa, to the, one of the most maybe uh, most uh, famous is Tudor Obom. He's not from basketball, but he's generally uh, been analyzing all sports. So this is his table. And uh, this is very right, right uh, philosophy of him. Early specialization and versatile. And you will find a lot, lot of, uh, just put on Google, uh, basketball, uh, early specialization or, or the general lot of lot of free information and these numbers are not unchangeable I, I can tell you but this is this is a kind of orientation where you have to go and with, with, with you need to focus uh, on your particular players uh, retardant accelerant and so just analyze situation so. yeah this is very helpful coach thank you very much it is uh, truly very much appreciated Pleasure, pleasure, man. So I, I will share, I will put uh, all, all uh, this presentation to YouTube so, because I, I have recorded this. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Coach. Uh, but anyway, I, I will turn the, the mic over to our organizer, Coach Luis Gonzalez, uh, since we are already, we still have a lot of uh, questions that the, our coaches want to ask uh, to Coach Minda, but uh, Coach Louis. And yeah, it, mm -hmm. yeah, thank you, Coach Minda. Uh, it, it is really informative, okay, helpful. Uh, okay, it's, it's, it's a quick two hours. And uh, actually, we, okay, we did not realize that it's, okay, it's been two hours already. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I know the, okay, this will be the first and definitely will not be the last. Uh, I think, uh, okay, thank you so much. And we can do a, more of this. And, and now, okay, and you just have to okay, choose on okay, the specific topic so we can focus on. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, for, for, for our next meeting, I can, I can uh, separately uh, analyze pometer options. I mean, all the opportunities, some uh, other presentations that we have. It's a very big pleasure to, to have such deep discussion. This is really great feeling thank you very much for organizing it and and then i'm i'm more than happy to come back if you wish thank you coach uh, coach john you want to say a few words yeah coach uh Shermin Daugas, now we realize that uh we are far from where we want to be so uh, 
but uh, because of your time and effort, uh, we thank you very much and uh, hope that we can uh, at least follow some of your uh, systems in, in, in Lithuania. Thank you. Awesome. Happy to see you here, my dear friends. As our dear friends Raymond came once, uh, it was very hard trip, but we are organizing different tours here, just, just showing what, what we have. But I'm, I, I believe that I will come to the Philippines uh, if this pandemic would uh, finish. So we, we can bring teams also. So thank you very much. I'm really looking forward. Sure. Thank you so much, Coach Minda. Okay, Ernest, I want also to take the opportunity to thank yung mga tumulong sa atin, okay, Gatorade, kay, 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 kay Sir Vince Wiko, maraming salamat. Sa boss ko, kay Sir Paul Supan, okay, uh, JRU, for letting us use yung, yung itong for the Zoom meeting, kay Miss Ivory, nung marketing namin. Uh, kay Coach Jong, okay, uh, kay Sir Butch din, Coach, maraming maraming salamat. Uh, malaking bagay po to, uh, okay, for the coaches, Coach Raymond Mercader, okay, for uh, bringing us uh, Coach Mindaugas. Uh, okay, maraming maraming salamat. And to all the coaches here na nagstay, uh, alam ko marami pa itong, marami pa, nabitin tayo, pero again, uh, rest assured na this is the first and definitely will not be the last. Okay, it will be a series. Marami pa kaming programa, okay, with the help of the Coach John. Okay, marami pa po tayong programa na gagawin to improve yung de basketball development, yung teaching, okay, para pagbalik po natin after this pandemic, handang-handa na tayo. And okay, siyempre, sa Sports on Air, kay Ernest, okay, kay Genesee, okay, maraming maraming salamat. Okay, thank you. Okay, Coach, uh, maybe we can have a, a few words from uh, Coach Mindas. Mm -hmm. Sure. So once again, I, I really very grateful, and uh, this is a big prestige for me to talk to all of you. We know Philippines as as very famous basketball country and big lovers of basketball. So uh, for me, uh, being with you and making more contact, more uh, let's say interaction between Lithuania and and Philippines uh, is, is a very meaningful, uh, you know, task and goal. So. Thank you, everybody, to, for arranging it. Uh, I will share this presentation and we'll be waiting uh, for the next hour meeting. So have a nice Saturday uh, mm -hmm. weekend and see you soon, my dear friends. Okay, thank you, Coach Mindas. Uh, but of course, uh, if you're talking to Filipinos, we love to take pictures. And uh, <laughs> even in this pandemic, we take pictures uh, through Zoom meetings. Uh, may we request all the coaches to turn on their cameras and we will put on put it on gallery view so we can have our uh, short class picture. <laughs> <laughs> Coaches, are you ready with your uh, smile? Nakadis, nakadisable yata yung mga video namin. <laughs> Pero yata, Coach. Ayun, okay na. Ayan. Ayan. <laughs> si Coach Dayong ayaw magpakita. Sorry. <laughs> thank you, Coach Shot. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, thank you. Tennessee, screenshots, please. Okay. Smile, everyone. Ayan. Pa paano, paano yun? Sa so, so yung tumunog? Nandyan pa rin. Nandyan rin pala yung tatay ko. Uh, Coach Ernest, <laughs> patihin ko lang. Tatay Glenn. Nag-abang nagda-drive pa. Kamusta? <laughs> Good evening sa inyong lahat. Uh, maraming salamat kay Coach Ninja. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And anyway, uh, thank you very much for attending this. Again, this is not the last. This is one of uh, one uh, very informative, very... Uh, I mean, if we could just digest the, the PowerPoint presentation a while ago and... Implementation will be the, the challenge as well for 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 all coaches uh, from uh, different age groups. But anyway, uh, please stay tuned here in Sports on Air again and uh, also in 3B Hoops. Please like, 
our page so you can be updated when will be the next uh, coaching seminar. And again, uh, we would like to thank Coach Louie, Coach uh, Jong, and Coach Mindas uh, for, for the time given to us on this uh, very good day on a Saturday. And uh, with that, we bid you farewell and leave you with this special message. Good day and God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ingat you Coach Louie. Thank you for watching. Click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified with our latest videos.